All right. Should I, should I clap? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now you'll know where it is. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, Kelly Washington is here. She um, took the leap and decided to take my invite to come on this show and uh, want to thank. So thank you so much. Um, yes, of course. I, I know you had said that you had, we had to reschedule here because of all the bad weather that's going on out there. And it's kind of like between, you know, we were talking before the podcast about the West Coast being on fire and the East Coast getting hit with tornadoes or with hurricanes. It's like, I don't even know what to say about 2020 anymore. <laughs> I, I wish that there was a way for us to take our all the water that is coming and drenching the East Coast and take it over to the West Coast. Wouldn't that be perfect? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> why Why are they so far away? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to ask my old geography professor. He can answer that for me. So um, I, I had said that, you know, uh, we have, again, Kelly Washington's here who was on. And the thing that I have to ask, like anybody who's out yes. there who's a major Parks and Rec nerd like I am, is that how you were in an episode in season four and an episode of season six, and yet somehow played two different characters what's no. up no i am the same character oh really yes oh because was it because uh wasn't the name like cassidy in season four and allison in season six yes so this is uh, this is probably the question i've answered the most in 2020 because there was an article <laughs> released that was like look at this crazy thing and i was like no that's not true <laughs> oh okay so well, that, that, my that, go ahead good no go ahead i'm so sorry <laughs> Uh, my name is Cassidy in the Model UN episode, but most people just call me France. And then when they decided to bring me back, the writers love their names. They're so creative. They're so well thought out. So they weren't in love with the name Cassidy. And so they wanted to give me a name that sounds better. So they decided to name me Allison Glifford. Oh, Okay. That that must have been the article I came across because I obviously I you know from having watched through the show more times than I want to publicly admit, um, <laughs> obviously knowing that you were in the UN episode and then in the prom episode, and it never even occurred to me that that would be two different characters because I mean the same actress looks exactly the same. I think they're even the same glasses, aren't they? Oh yeah, it's the same glasses. <laughs> yeah, and then when I was so I was you know trying to be a good host and doing some background research, getting ready for this episode, and I went, wait a minute, that's two different names. So that must have been that article I came across because I was then Google searching it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it is two different characters. That, <laughs> like I want to know if there was some crazy story behind why they did it. No, it's just the article was wrong. Okay, the article is wrong. Yeah, unfortunately. Twenty twenty ha hashtag fake news. Um, true. <laughs> <laughs> So for those of us who are like on the other side um, of the whole showbiz situation, so when, when they're coming up for, um, they want to film or they're going to do that season for the Model UN episode, was there like an audition involved in that? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yes. Um, that was, I had lived in Los Angeles for about three months and got this, you know, big audition for Parks and Rec, which is one of my favorite shows. And I didn't know LA very well. I was running, I was so late because it was like up in Hollywood and I was like, I don't know where I'm going. And I like, I'm freaking out. I showed up and I was the last person to audition and I was very frazzled and I was like, ah, okay, okay. And she was like, it's okay, breathe. She was like, the casting director was amazing. And I, like read it through with me and I then I left and I called my mom all excited I was like I think it went really well <laughs> <laughs> so how long do you got to wait till they give you the call and say hey you got it are you like sitting on pins and needles for like hours or days or weeks or it just a, a days days it happens pretty fast with tv mm -hmm. movies take a little longer yeah I so so then like um two years goes by and do they just, did you just get a random call again? Like, Hey, we want you to come back. He, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I stayed really close with some of the casting crew. So I kind of had an, like, I would kind of know what's going on, but I, that was a big surprise. And then I was supposed to come back in the last season, but unfortunately they cut that. Oh. Womp womp. <laughs> yeah, would have been. Were you the like the new director of parks? Because that uh, would have been. That would have been amazing. I, right. 
I don't know. Um, part of it was, I think I was still with Greg Pakaitis. I do oh. know that was part of it. <laughs> I had that on the list of stuff to bring up. Like, I always want to know what happened like down the road. Like, did she realize that he was just a bad boy she had a thing for at the moment and moved on? Or did he change his ways and became mayor or something? Or In my head, she definitely left him. <laughs> like, got out of there. You know, maybe it was like rebelling a little bit. There was a lot of like conflicting things going on for her. Uh, so she just like needed a bad boy for that time. But right. yeah, she's definitely like in my head, she definitely went to work for the government and is thriving there and following Leslie Nope's footsteps. Mm -hmm. Was it ever decided at the end of the, the prom episode which way she was going in terms of the internship or the, I'm assuming she didn't take the job at the mill. It, it's not decided, but in, I decided she took the internship. Good. That's what we were all rooting for. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you so, can't be a little Leslie and not go and work at the parks department. <laughs> right. 100%. That's what I always thought is that, you know, the show ended and we could have caught up years later and, you know, here's, you know, here's Allison running the parks department and, you know, Craig is outside screaming or something because he's <laughs> now city manager and everything's falling apart. And, um, <laughs> So do they, in something like that, in a role like that, in a TV show, you know, they sort of give you the script. Do they give you like a lot of wee leeway or do you yourself sort of like develop a character behind the one you're given and a background in that kind of stuff? Or are you just kind of rolling with it and shooting it? You definitely develop a background for any character you're playing. Um, who is this person? You know, what's their life? It's with film, obviously there's a lot more time and, a lot more development that goes into that with this I mean you take what they wrote for you and the director will also you know be giving you what their perspective is but I think as an actor it's always important to have a background and really do the developmental work of your character mm -hmm. did you have any uh kind of person or other character that you sort of drew from for that one or did you just sort of pretend to be yourself <laughs> Which, uh, how, basically, how far away, how different are Kelly and Allison? Look at it that way. Oh, that's a good question. No one's ever asked me that. <laughs> uh, it's the type A part of me, for sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe less goofy. Uh, Kelly's a little more goofy. <laughs> 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 but that would probably be, hmm. Of all the characters I've played I think that would be the closest to me because like Z Nation I was half zombie human thing mm -hmm. not like me you know a little different <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit do you um so if you and Allison met you would get along you think or she would drive me crazy because we <laughs> oh yes <laughs> because we'd both want to be in charge, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Definitely. That, um, I, I have to imagine being on the set of a show like Parks and Rec, that almost had to be just like god awful. Because I'm sure the cast that's on that show, you know, Amy Poehler, um, Audrey Plaza, Adam Scott, they seem like really, really mean spirited, all business, <laughs> no play type people. That just had to be. Oh yeah, Torture. just miserable. Oh my God. <laughs> I tell everybody I got so spoiled that my first big guest star experience was Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. It is just the most incredible cast and crew in LA, in Hollywood, in all of filming, I swear. It's, they were just the most amazing people. And a lot of times they say it starts with number one on the call sheet, which would be Amy. And she really did make it a fun, loving family environment. So that's kind of good. I'm sure it wasn't, um, it wasn't one of those things where you, you show up, you know, there in season four to play, I'll just say Cassidy Allison, um, <laughs> that, um, you know, they probably did, they didn't have an attitude like, oh yeah, here's this person here. She's just here for a one-off episode. Nobody really talked to you. No, I, that's, I sit in the makeup chair and Amy's sitting right next to me. She's like, hi, I'm Amy. And I'm like, Hi, I'm Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> and immediately engaging in conversation. Uh, I was talking about this recently, actually, just 
at no point did I feel like I was beneath them. Mm -hmm. At every moment, whether it was prepping, uh, rehearsing the scene, eating lunch, like whatever it might be, at every point they made sure that you felt equal, that you were a part of it. Um, and that's including the crew as well. Like, and I'd never felt like, oh, she's just here, you know, for a week, it's fine. She'll, you know, what's your name again? No, like, Kelly, how are you today? Like making sure I felt very involved. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. That's, and it always seemed to me, at least from, you know, following a lot of those people on social media and seeing interviews and stuff there, and they always came across that kind of people. Sometimes, you know, with shows, you're always shocked to learn when it's a really fun, funny show. And you find out down the road that there was a lot of strife behind the cameras. There were a lot of cast members yeah. who didn't get along. And I'm like, I always thought to myself, like, I don't know a lot about it, but I got the, got the gut feeling that Parks and Rec wasn't that kind of show. Yeah, no, not at all. Everybody was very close. It, it was so cool. And everyone was so nice. Like, I have nothing negative to say. The only people I didn't, the only person I never met was Rob Lowe. Oh, Okay. <laughs> but Poor. I'm sure he's great too. I just he's I just never met him. He's a Dodgers fan, so I mean, <laughs> he's okay. Are, are you a, not a Dodgers fan? No, I, I here in Illinois it's it's Cubs fan, you know. And then there's oh, like, yes. there's a small corner of White Sox fans who pop up every decade when they're relevant, but then they go <laughs> away again. Um, You're wearing so, a backwards baseball hat, so yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's blue. So all I know is it could be a Dodgers hat, right? Yeah, well, you know, you folks who hang around LA think everything's blue as Dodgers, so <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that that's 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 forgiven. Um, so the the I, I part of the reason why I started or came across you was following you on Twitter and on Instagram, and and I'm one of those people who every time I'm I, I always think to myself that everybody no matter who they are, no matter where they are, has some kind of story. They have some kind of background to them. And after having a big, big fan of Parks and Rec and watching that show, and then I remember when I went and saw um, Jurassic World in the, in the theater, you know, one of the opening scenes, I'm like, oh my God, that's, that's, that's Allison from Parks and Rec. So then I got to like go to IMDb and find, I, I find myself following people such as that on social media, because it's always interesting to see that like, you know, even when you're watching any kind of movie, you know, even if there's an extra in the background, that extra you know, they have a story, you know, they have parents, some of them have children, they have a, a path and how they got to where they are. Right. Um, so that was part of the reason I started following you, which then is a, I think, an absolutely brilliant segue into asking you about Jurassic World. Um, <laughs> is that again, is that like, uh, is it like, because uh, those of us who have no idea how this stuff works, was that another sort of audition thing? Or is it just sort of like somebody saw you in something else and said, hey, let's get Kelly? Uh Man, I wish it was that easy. Uh, no, it's pretty much everything is always audition based until you reach, you know, a certain level of fame where you get offers and that kind of thing. But uh, where I'm at, still hustling and bustling. Uh, no, that, that was an audition. And I had kept in contact with Chris Pratt. So when I got the audition, I just messaged him and I was like, hey, you know, you know, I hope like this isn't uh, awkward or whatever, but uh -huh. I had an audition for Jurassic World and I would just love if you could put in a good word for me. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, it, then it was very nice to get to see him and watch him become a movie star. Oh my God, you're not kidding. <laughs> like a huge... One of the most famous movie stars. I know, I know. And as somebody who, you know, watched Parks and Rec, it was such a bizarre thing from the trajectory that his career took from season one to the last season. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. at first he was just kind of that flabby, nerdy kind of, you know, and then all of a sudden he was Star-Lord, and then all of a sudden he was Jurassic Park. And, and I remember I was listening to an interview with uh, James Gunn, who directed Guardians of the Galaxy. And he was talking about how they were trying to cast Peter Quill Star-Lord for the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. And somebody has suggested Chris Pratt. And he blatantly, you know, he freely admits that he was immediately turned off by the idea. He's like, I don't want that chunky nerd being the center role in my movie. And then Chris Pratt came in and auditioned. And he was like, oh, my God. Like, that's him. <laughs> that's 100% him. And he told several people that Chris, at the time, while they were still filming Guardians of the Galaxy, that Chris Pratt was the biggest star in the world. People just didn't know it yet. 
And then, it, it, of course, it was hilarious. It's, and in Parks and Rec, when all of a sudden he shows up like midway through the season, he's lost a crap ton of weight. Right. You know? and, and Ben Wyatt's like, so you just quit drinking yeah. beer? That was it. Yo, How much that's beer it. were you drinking? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, it, that, it, he And he died it like crazy to get that, you know, in shape. Yeah. Oh my God. And even the workout routine you'd have to do just to, because all, oh, all of a sudden you see him in that shirtless scene in Guardians and you're like, oh my God, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. Com compared to I, the He's word not a small dude. I mean, he's a mess. That was the first thing I ever said when I like met him. I came out of my trailer and he came out at the same time. And I, uh, I like to say I have a height deficiency. Um, <laughs> so I like see him towering over me and I was like, oh my God, you are so tall. Also hi, I'm Kelly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's, gosh, that's a good one. Oh, man. What, um, so uh, as I'll go back to this. So you say that Allison is the character you played that's probably most like you. Outside of that, which was the one you've enjoyed playing the most? Ooh, ooh, you are really good at questions. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Outside of Allison. I mean, I have characters I haven't gotten to play yet in movies and television that I love auditioning. Like, I love auditioning for like, witchy with a B characters uh, that are a little like high status and just, oh. uh, really like 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 say it's mean things without like thinking they're mean <laughs> like real just matter of fact yeah and i also do love playing like very nerdy very type a very organized like that um gosh what did i have the most fun with that's so hard i mean getting to dive into the work in traffic was I enjoyed the process. I wouldn't say that's like, it's not like, wow, this is so fun. Yeah. I, um, but I really enjoy the work as an actor. Um, Bunked was really fun getting to be ridiculous and kind of like aggro and <laughs> like beat up on this small human. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good word. I like that. Aggro. Nice. <laughs> aggro. Yeah. What, um, so here's a, here's a, here's a question. If yes. you look, if, if you look back on anything, any TV show, any movie that's ever been made, if you could like, you know, have the Infinity Gauntlet, snap your fingers, and get to play any <laughs> character anywhere, anytime, what would it be? Currently, I want to be Spider Gwen. So freaking bad. You know what? That's funny. I like legit had that written down on my note sheet over here. <laughs> <laughs> because I was going to ask you if there was an MC movie in your future, because I don't know why you're not playing Spider Gwen. Oh my God! Thank you so much. I mean, your, just your mouth to God's ears. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll get on Twitter and tell everybody. I'm sure they'll listen. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I thought that because, like, I, me, and everybody in my family were we're all you know huge fans of Into the Spider Verse. It was such such a well done movie. It's and, incredible. Uh, yeah. And then after seeing your Instagram, I'm like, oh my God, why is, why is Kelly Washington not playing Gwen Stacy? This would be, oh my God. listen, Disney plus, if you're out there, you already know who she is, Disney. So yes, make this happen. I think, I think it'd be absolutely amazing. And um, oh, I'm trying to think of, gosh, and then we could get um, Nick Offerman to come in and play your dad. <gasps> oh yeah. yeah Talk about something? just like an amazing human. Oh, oh my yeah. God. He is fabulous and wonderful mm -hmm. I, the, the, one of the things that I enjoyed about the show is when you compare who his character was in the first season and as it progressed it was like they slowly progressively let Ron Swanson become Nick Offerman yeah. is, is really what it felt like you know <laughs> right getting to show some of his uh, awesome quirks and like they used his real wood shop mm -hmm. for um for Ron Swanson's I, I had heard that and I, you know, my, my wife and I, we, <clears throat> both of us being huge fans of the show, we've had this joke running for a long time that my wife is what would happen if um, Ben Wyatt and Leslie Nope had a kid. Like she is like 100% like that combination of two personalities. And then when I ask her what I am and she's like, you are 100% if somehow, some way biologically, 
Ron Swanson and Andy Dwyer could have a love child. Like that would be you. <laughs> Um, I, I joke all the time on Facebook and social media that Nick Offerman is my spirit animal because, <laughs> well, first of all, he's a huge Cubs fan, which is awesome. Oh, there you go. He grew up in Mononc, Illinois, about two hours south of me, which is a little, little tiny farm town. And, um, you know, I, I keep telling my wife that I need to just go down there and hang out for random weekends around holidays, just in case he comes back to town to see family <laughs> and I can bump into him and get a restraining order or something. But... <laughs> But no, he, he, he is abs absolutely, he's an amazing, he's a fun guy just to watch follow on social media and some of this different stuff he does. You know, there are some people you follow on social media that are celebrities and they're like, you know, doing this and doing that. And he's one of those people who will randomly post a picture on Twitter. He's like, yep, went through United Airlines. They wouldn't let me bring my belt sander as a carry on. And you're like, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> that's not something you're going to see the rocker Robert Downey Jr. posting on social media. Only that's only right. something Nick Offerman with you. you know? Right. <laughs> Cause he's, totally. legitimate, he's legitimately just who he is, you know? Yes. Unapologetically. Yes. Um, so I know we touched on a little bit earlier, but I, I, wasn't 100% sure of the answer. Have you ever heard of Disney or Disney World before? You know what? Like, not really. What is that? Tell me oh, more. Oh, it's going to blow your <laughs> mind. Listen, <laughs> I got I got such a kick out of listening to um, and let the audience know that Kelly is co-host of the Slice of Disney podcast. And I got was listening to a few episodes of that here over the last couple of weeks. And I, it just occurred to me, like, you're like a certifiable, like, Disney historian. I... <laughs> <laughs> I I have um, a slight obsession with Disney and Disney theme parks, and it's been really enjoyable for me to get to nerd out and use my knowledge for something because mm -hmm. it's it's something I'm passionate about. I mean, last year alone, I convinced like twelve people to get annual passes to Disneyland. Oh wow! And I don't, and it's annoying. I don't get paid. <laughs> I don't know why Disney hasn't paid me yet, but right. well, they can pay in a role as Spider Gwen, and everything will be perfect. Yeah, Amen. Yes. <laughs> where where did that start for you? I'm assuming, I'm assuming as a little one. Yeah, my mom has always like loved Mickey Mouse as a kid, and they my parents went the first time I went was I say was in the womb, and then they just kept us going, and it became something my family really enjoyed. In middle schoolish, I became a little like, ugh, like lame. I'm over Disney. I'm a cool middle schooler now. And then it became kind of cool to like quirky things again mm -hmm. in high school. So then I re embraced it. And then living in Los Angeles and living 45 minutes away from Disneyland, oh. yeah, the the obsession has grown. Yes. Yes. Oops. <laughs> So what was, um, how did that lead into the deciding to do the podcast? You just one day say, you know what? I want to get on the internet and talk about Disney. <laughs> well, uh, my friend Will, uh, he's been a best friend of mine for a long time. And he's been trying to convince me to do something as Kelly for a really long time, whether it's like a vlog or a podcast or something. So, and I'm always like, no, no, like nobody wants to listen to me, you know? <laughs> and I guess like during quarantine and a little bit before I was like you know what let's do it let's what and, and it was trying to find that right thing to talk about mm -hmm. and Disney just felt like the answer <laughs> well there you go well it's a my hat's off to Will first of all because he's a he's a I don't want to feel like this is this is not including him because he's a great co-host on that podcast and um yeah Yay! Anybody, hats off to anybody who can do the audio visual stuff because I'm still trying to figure it out um, <laughs> So what's on the what's on the horizon for you? Anything cooking? Anything plans or more podcasting? Um, <laughs> you hopefully, both. yeah. <laughs> hopefully, um, as the industry opens back up, you know something good will come my way. I can feel it. Yeah, I can feel it coming. But it has been a kind of a hard year as an actor because obviously my entire world has shut down. Right. And you know things are trying to reopen i'm sure you saw like jurassic world they spent a crap load of money to start production up again make sure it was covid safe and within like the first two days someone got covid and had to shut the entire production down oh my god no i hadn't heard that yeah <sighs> so they're trying um it seems like they're ha they're starting to have more success but it's hard because i mean as an actor no matter what i have to be close to someone mm-hmm 
you know, so it's yeah. tricky. Yeah, that is, it's an insanely bizarre. Any When you think about any of that kind of stuff, that's projects that are delayed and are just kind of shut down or even potentially could not even happen now because if it's some kind of small production company and they run out of money just trying to keep things on pause until things are okay right. to operate again. That's just, it's, you know, we, I live in a little town here, just, uh, just under 30,000 in our movie theater is just now getting close to starting to reopen. And, you know, it was just kind of like, it was a stark mark of the times when we got into mid March and everything kind of shut down. And, you know, there were big lit up reader board that would have all the movies that were coming and dates and times and all that stuff instead just said, be safe. And, oh. you know, it was really kind of like, it was, I, I remember I took a picture of it and sent it to my sisters who have since moved out of town. And, you know, it was kind of this gray overcast day and it really just kind of set the mood for, you know, where everything was going. Yeah. Um, so God, I, I certainly hope, you know, we can get back there. It's been bizarre with baseball coming back and attempting to do a half a season and the million precautions they have to take. And even then they've had teams that were shut down, you know, lost a week's worth of games because a couple of people on the team tested positive and all of a sudden they right. got to shut everything down again. And, you know, now they're trying with football and yeah. So hopefully, gosh, we're all, we're all pulling because believe me, if there's ever a time in human history, we need entertainment. It's right now, you know, I know it's, it's hard. And I miss it so much. Like right now, I, I take class every week and uh, my acting class, you know, we're doing it on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And that's such a huge adjustment, like acting, sitting at my desk, like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was, a, and it, it's, it's changed for me because when I first started this podcast, I had like um, two hard and fast rules was that number one, it was not going to be about anything in particular. It was just going to be having interesting people on from different backgrounds and talking and conversing. And the second rule was every single podcast I had to do had to be in person. Oh. Well, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> that suddenly became no longer feasible. I had to shut down and have like seven months where I didn't even have a podcast because I'm like, you know, there's no way I could it, in good conscience invite somebody to come into my home, both for their safety and for mine. Right. And, and uh, eventually I just, you said, you know what, um, we're just going to do this zoom thing. And so far it's worked out pretty well. Um, and you get to talk to people far away. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like all the way in Georgia. Yeah. All the way in Georgia. That's Georgia, United States, right? Not like yeah. <laughs> you're not in Russia. Okay. Yes. I am. I am in the United, I'm in the South. <laughs> did you, did you grow up there? Were you born there yeah. in Georgia? Yeah. I grew up in Georgia. Um, and then I fit LA as my home now. Mm-hmm. I do. I love Los Angeles. It's a weird place, but I love it. <laughs> I've never been there. I've always wanted to. Um, I remember uh, years ago, I spent a good deal of time in San Diego and just flying there from Chicago, you would sort of like skirt kind of the, the, the greater Los Angeles area and you'd look out and it was just like a blanket of civilization. It was just, it was <laughs> so huge that it, it was is. like, you know, for somebody who lives in like, you know, the farm town USA, where it's like, I can drive two miles in any direction and I'm going to be in cornfields. That That's just like to Weird. see a metropolis that huge is like, oh gosh. Yeah, I'm But really you're not sure. far from Chicago, right? No, it's uh, from here in Freeport, it's right about a two hour drive. Okay. And, um, you know, from there that we're here in Freeport, it's kind of weird. We're like, right. If you were to draw a line from Chicago to the Mississippi river, which is the Iowa border, we're like right dead in the middle and like 10 miles south of Wisconsin border. You couldn't get more Midwest than, than right here in Freeport, <laughs> Illinois. Shout out to the pretzels. That's our high school mascot. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Which has got to go down as I think one of the weirdest mascots. In, a pretzel? In the, yeah. The pretzel. There was a, Back in the day, there was a huge influx of German immigrants here who loved their beer, and there were a ton of breweries in town. Well, you couldn't name a high school team the beers or the brewers, you know, so they decided to name them the pretzels because that's what everybody Oh, my God, that's hilarious. had with their beers. <laughs> so they had a contest a few years ago, a nationwide contest to decide who had, like, the weirdest mascot, high school mascot, and I want to say pretzels came in second. I don't remember what came in first, but I think the voting was rigged because <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how pretzel doesn't win. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, you got anything else you want to add? I don't want to hang on to you forever. Uh, no, you ask really interesting questions, and I love it. Well, thank you. Pass the word along, and you say you keep in touch with Chris Pratt. Send him a text for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but hey, everybody, want to uh, give a big give a big thanks to Kelly for coming on. I really, really appreciate it, and uh, 
yeah, we'll keep in touch. And down the road, if you got something on, let me know. I'd love to have you on again. And Yeah, of course. Thank and, you uh, so much for having me. Yeah, definitely. Give Will a high five for me. I will. Oh, I miss Will. <laughs> <laughs> Is he in the area with you? or? No, he's in Paducah, Kentucky. Oh. He also left LA because it's just, I mean, it's hard being stuck in a small space because there's so many people there. So like you're saying, you know, you have space. But down here in Georgia, it's nice because, you know, I have space i can walk around without wearing my mask you know right yeah outside. exactly <laughs> <laughs> well give him give him a text high five for me then. i that'll, will <laughs> that'll work too <laughs> all yeah. right well thank you so much kelly yes thank you for having me you bet bye-bye bye, -bye. <laughs> bye.